Let's verify that this function on this closed interval satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem, and then we'll find all numbers c that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem, that the value of the derivative at that number c is equal to the average rate of change of the function. Here is the mean value theorem for your reference. There are two hypotheses we have to check. We have to check that f is continuous on the closed interval in question, and we have to check that it's differentiable on the open interval in question. Then we can try to find the number c that satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theorem. In this case, verifying the hypotheses is a breeze because this function is a polynomial. Since it's a polynomial, it's continuous and differentiable everywhere. In particular, it's continuous on this closed interval and differentiable on the open interval from negative 1 to positive 1. So certainly the mean value theorem applies, and we are guaranteed at least one number c between negative 1 and positive 1, so that the value of the derivative at c is equal to the average rate of change of the function over this interval. Now let's find that number. In order to find where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change, we first need to find what the average rate of change is. So let's calculate f of a and f of b f of a is f of negative 1, that's the starting point of the interval, and plugging negative 1 into our function, we have 3 times 1, which is 3, minus 2 plus 5, so that is 6. And then we calculate f of b, which is f of 1, that's the value of the function at the end of the interval, and that's 3 plus 2 plus 5, which is 10. Again, that just comes from plugging 1 into the function. So the function starts at 6 and it ends at 10, so we can find the average rate of change by doing 10 minus 6 divided by the ending x-coordinate, 1, minus the beginning x-coordinate, negative 1. This is 4 divided by positive 2, so the average rate of change is 2. So then to find the number we're looking for, we need to take the derivative of f and set that derivative equal to the average rate of change, and then solve for c to figure out where that happens. And everything's pretty easy here. We take the derivative of f using the power rule, so 6x plus 2. We see that there. f prime of x is 6x plus 2. Now we're looking for a number c, so that f prime of c, which is equal to 6c plus 2, is equal to 2, because 2 is the average rate of change. So we take this derivative and set it equal to 2. Now solving that equation for c, that yields c equals 0. Just subtract 2 from both sides, then we have 6c equals 0, so divide both sides by 6, and we get c equals 0. So that is the number in the interval guaranteed to exist by the mean value theorem, where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. Here's what it looks like in a picture. This is the quadratic function on the interval in question, and this secant line, the line through the endpoints of the function on the interval, its slope is the average rate of change. So what we found is that at c equals 0, the tangent line is parallel to the secant line. The derivative's value is the same as the average rate of change of the function over the interval. And so that's the secant line through those endpoints, whose slope is the average rate of change. And then here's our tangent line at x equals 0. Again, notice they are parallel. That's because at this particular point, the average rate of change of the function is the same as the slope of the tangent line, which is, of course, the derivative. And just to finish up, here are some examples of functions that don't satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. Try to look at each one and determine why it doesn't satisfy the hypotheses. I'll tell you quickly now. Tangent x is not find at pi over 2, so it's not continuous and certainly not differentiable on this interval. The absolute value of x minus 2 is continuous on this interval, but it fails to be differentiable at x equals 2. And 1 over x minus 1, of course, that's neither continuous nor differentiable at x equals 1, which is in this interval. The mean value theorem would apply to these functions on different intervals, but on these intervals, doesn't apply. So that's how to verify that a function satisfies the mean value theorem and how to find the number c guaranteed to exist by the theorem. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my Calculus 1 course and Calculus 1 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching.
stressed out, honey. I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what. Don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie. I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you